Hi, I'm Hans Pregler, Technical Director at Young Auditorium. Since we have no events until further notice, I have the opportunity to show you how all the magic happens behind the curtain. Welcome to Backstage Perspectives. Join me as we explore what it takes to put the show on the road. We will look at dance, music, theater, children's programming, Broadway musicals, and more. On this episode of Backstage Perspectives, I will be chatting with Matt O'Brien about Great Works Touring Theater and their upcoming performance of Anne Frank. Find a comfy seat, because our next episode starts right now. Hi, my name is Matt O'Brien, and I am the producing director for Great Works Theater in Chicago. Uh, Great Works is a national touring company, we're Chicago-based. Uh, we cover pretty much the entire eastern half of the country as well as up into Canada. And we have a roster of uh, 13 to 15, depending on the year, uh, shows that are all geared for audiences in the K through ninth grade. Uh, our age range, all of them curriculum based in one way or another, either about social studies or about history or about literature. So. Um, we do a lot of working with our partners in the education world, uh, teachers, administrators, kind of finding out what they're, where they are at, um, because we're trying to devise shows that are going to work hand in glove with the educational curriculum. So we'll find out what books they're teaching, um, we'll find out what sorts of things they're not seeing from other theater companies or from other, other sources. Um, and then we have a number of writers, myself as well as a few other folks, uh, who will sit down, usually solo rather than collaboration, um, but but once a script has been devised, then it's handed over to the actors and whoever's directing the show. And they, in turn, will take four or five weeks of just kind of working it through, which is pretty much the process as with any other uh, new play. Um, kind of saying, yeah, hey, here's a joke that's better, or here's a moment that where we can close this up. So um, if you look at the first rehearsal draft to the version of the script that's out there in three or four weeks after the actors get it, they're usually radically different, although if we've done our job right, the structure of the show will still be pretty much in line with what the original intent was. Um, so we have a company of around 45 actors who work with us in Chicago, uh, many of whom have been here for more than a dozen years, uh, as well as a number of directors who work with us as well as other theater companies. And uh, I think what we like about this is that it's a very collaborative atmosphere. Everybody's got a role to play and, and, and their feedback and their input is encouraged all the way through the process. So uh, our process in terms of hiring actors is that we'll do one big round of season general auditions, usually in June uh, of every year. Chicago has always been a place where recent graduates from acting programs uh, come because it's a good theater town. You can actually make a living working as an actor. And so we time it so that we're getting that first wave of folks just as they're coming here from wherever they graduated school from. Um, we will typically get anywhere from 400 to 600 submissions every year from actors who'd like to be seen. Out of that group, we'll pull in usually 60 to maybe 70. Um, our audition process is a little different than most other theaters. Uh, a lot of theaters with general auditions, they want you to do a couple of um, uh, prepared monologues. In our case, we actually have a series of sides, actual pieces from scripts, uh, because it's more useful to us to kind of get a sense of how an actor works with the actual material that we'll be using. Um, and then out of that, that group of, uh, of uh, uh, actors auditioning will find usually 20, maybe 22, who might be fitting certain things that we're specifically looking to fill that year. We'll pull them, pull them back in for a callback process where we'll usually give them another half hour to maybe 90 minutes to work with us and some of the actors that we already have cast. And a lot of what we're looking for is not just the flexibility in terms of what an actor can do, but really we're looking for their personality because one of the things we've found over the years is really key is that you have to find people who have that collaborator uh, mindset, but also are people that you can feel relatively guaranteed are going to be pleasant to be around when it's 6 o'clock in the morning in the middle of February and they're standing at an L stop waiting to get picked up to go to a show. Uh, so once a show is cast, our rehearsal process is actually pretty condensed. Um, because we have so many shows that are in rep at a given year, um, we don't really have the luxury of having the traditional three to four week rehearsal period before a show opens. Um, what we do instead is if a script is already a prepared script, if it's one that's already gone through the revision process during rehearsals, uh, we'll hand them the script and say, here's your lines, come in memorized. 
Uh, we'll call everybody in and they may have anywhere from six to nine, three to four hour rehearsals working together as a team to basically learn the show. And uh, once that's done, it's up to them to kind of keep it fresh. So we make sure we've got videos of all the productions once they're up so the actors can go back and use those to uh, review their blocking and their business. But um, yeah, it's a it's good experience for anybody who ever wants to work in film and television because they're very much the same way where you get the lines the night before and you're expected to come in on set the next day knowing everything ready to go. Um, and then after that, we'll usually call them in a couple times a year for pickup rehearsals or if we've got any cast replacements, if somebody's moved out, moved on for other reasons, um, where we'll put in new people. Um, but it, the impetus really for us, or the onus rather on the actors, is to maintain their own performance, to really be professional in that sense. Our uh, production of the Anne Frank story um, is very different from the traditional sort of Broadway adaptation of Diary of Anne Frank um, in that we use her diary and her story of her family and the others living in the annex to um, explore the wider questions of genocide and how does this start um, and to kind of make the point that what happened to the Anne Frank family was not an isolated incident. The characters in the show uh, are played by characters who are themselves survivors of the genocides in Armenia and Rwanda and Bosnia. Um, and we've done that in part because our experience of the last few years, 10, maybe 10, 12 years ago, when we did have a more traditional Anne Frank show, was that I think a lot of middle schoolers now kind of look at it and they see all these 1940s character costumes and everything and it just feels like a museum piece. It doesn't have the immediacy that we think it really has to. Um, and we find that by having a much more diverse uh, uh, collection of characters on stage, um, it makes the show feel much more immediate and much more impactful. And also the fact that now it gives the teachers a jumping off point to start looking at the larger questions of genocide and ethnic cleansing and how does it all start. And there are some commonalities that are so banal to use uh, Hannah Arndt's uh, phrase, um, that they are surprising, but I think also we want the students to walk out at the end of it going, oh, gee, when my uncle says that thing about people from Africa, you know, that's a little way of opening that door towards what people allow themselves to do to themselves and to others in the interest of whatever dives uh, a genocide. Um, so, the show runs just a little bit over an hour. Um, it covers the Anne Frank story, so Anne Frank is on stage. She's one of the characters. But the fact that you are seeing um, such a, a diverse group of characters, and they're all wearing their costumes from different periods, so the characters who survived um, the Bosnian genocide in the 1990s actually look very similar to people today because fashion hasn't really changed all that much since then. Um, and I think the fact that it feels so modern is a way to really get inside the head of a 12 or 13 or 14 year old and say, no, this is, this is you, this is happening today in its own ways. And uh, I think especially in this country right now, there are certainly some seeds out there of the very types of emotional calls to arms that have led to genocides in the past. And certainly right now, we wanna make sure that students are aware that we see it and we want them to be able to see it too. Thank you for watching today's episode. This program was made possible by Young Auditorium. We hope that you will support your local artists and local arts venues. If you would like to support Young Auditorium, please follow the link below. Also listed below are the links to the websites of today's guests. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and share our content.